aunt named Tressa, and she just was, she begged me not to get married. She was just like, y'all are too young. Uh, me and be scared. God gonna get them. Uh, like, when, they, when they're just not scared at all, uh, I think that's when the cheating happened. Honesty, communication, and a great sex life. Hmm. That's interesting that you picked those three. Because yeah. usually women just like communication, communicate, communication, communication. <laughs> so as a woman, what made you say the sex life? What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. This is another installment of the Life After Divorce series that I'm so excited about because if you've been through a divorce, you already know what it takes to go through one and what it's like to get out of it and to start your life all over again. And this is why we have this platform and why we're doing it. We have a special guest with us today. Today's guest is a comedian. She's an entrepreneur and you have seen her on season four of Ready to Love on OWN Network. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Tressa. How are you doing this evening? I am excellent. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> For sure. Uh, it's it's funny, like, being able to interview you now, because I was just watching you on TV, like, you know, some months ago or whatever. Oh, that was, well, it aired some years ago, so, but I know, you know, on to come up here and there, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I, I showed my wife, she was like, oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> so I, I was wanted... me. <laughs> So I want to talk about this uh, Life After the Divorce series. Um, and I want to start with how did you and your ex meet? Um, so we're talking about ex-husband, not exes after that, but ex-husband. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's, it, this is a safe place. You know, we don't have to do any shade or no jabs. And nothing. You know, it was a long time ago. So, I mean, we, oh, okay. it's, been, it's been plenty of them after that. But uh, my ex-husband and I met in high school. Yeah, we met in high school, we were friends, and then we started dating, uh, kind of, we dated a little bit in high school, but then after high school, too. Mm, okay, high school sweethearts, huh? One of them. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> one, I mean, he wasn't the only one, but, you know, he was he was the last one. <laughs> so what, what made you say, you know, this was this the man for me? Oh, man, actually... <laughs> Truthfully, at the time I was I was pretty religious, like um, annoyingly so. And I remember it, it's just the, this funny story. We were like, I don't know, I guess I was seventeen. He must have been nineteen. And he grew up in the church. Like his mother, his his father went to church, but like he went because it's what his what he what his wife wanted him to do. But his mother was a, was a, an evangelist and a minister, and so he grew up reading the bible and just he he had always wanted to get married like he grew up wanting to get married and we were on the train in chicago i'm from chicago and um he was like what do you think if we um are celibate until marriage and i went off on the brother i was like that's just the stupidest thing that i done heard we haven't already did it like that don't even make any and so it was just i was so livid and so then after that is when i became super religious you know so it wasn't spiritual i was it was religious spirit all the way through so i remembered that like he was willing to do that so once i you know got saved yeah. um then i went and found him like i i knew where he worked so I like went to his apartment. I went to his job and I was just like, okay, like we could do that. You know what I mean? Like we're going to be together. He'd always told me he, he was going to marry me. Like even when we were friends, he used to say that. And um, so, I mean, that's really what it was. I, it was just more so like him being willing to be celibate into marriage until marriage. And nobody else was going to do it. At least that's how I felt at yeah. the time. You know, mm -hmm. so. I remember that conversation and he was just, he was, he was a, he, I mean, he still is a, a, a good person. He's not religious anymore, but um, he still is. He was a, he was a good guy. And I always wanted to have one woman, one wife, and that's what he wanted. And so I'm like, okay, well, I don't think I'm gonna find this again. So let me, let me, let me get back together with him. Cause I, I had broke up with him because he, 
um, he, uh, uh, what do you call it when you, it's a simple term. He faked me out. He said, he stood me up. He stood yeah. me up mm. on a date and left me downtown Chicago. And back then that's when you had beepers. So we didn't have cell phones and I'm paging him and paging him. And he would not, he, he didn't show up to come to find out he was with his friends smoking weed, some stupid that he did eventually admit to. But by that point, I'm done, you know, and I broke up with him. So after I got saved, I went and found my man. And that, <laughs> and that was I, it. I was 19. Mm -hmm. So, oh, so you was 19 when you first got married? Yeah, I was 19. He was 21. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was 24. How do you feel about getting married young? How do you feel about that? It's stupid. It's stupid. <laughs> I know there's no way, way I can. I mean, your brain isn't even developed. You know, you got to When I say, you know, you got to understand what you want. I'm not talking about sex wise. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about what you have to know yourself. You have to know what kind of person that, that you want in your life, you know, the, you know, what do you want the values for them, them to have and vice versa. But I mean, just live like, you know, not that you, you can do that. Sure. You can, to a certain extent, if you don't have kids right away, you, there are things you could do with your spouse, but I just think you need to be an adult first and understand what living alone means and paying bills on your own and, and, and having your own resolve and how you solve problems and how you react to problems and, and, you know, I'm um, just having that experience, not trying to grow up together and have all these crazy experiences together that end up, and, it, and that can happen whether you're 30, 40, or 50, but I'm just saying, just experiencing things for the very first time, it just puts a lot of strain on a marriage. It really does. It really does. I, I hear you. I hear you. Did you so did y'all do premarital counseling? A little bit. A little, a little bit. I wouldn't say I'm sure we probably should have had it a, more sessions than what we did. Um, again, I'm 45. So this was a long time ago. Um, but we did meet with the pastor. It was probably like three times or something like two or three times, something like that. Yeah. You know, but just um, my we were just two totally different people. I was the breadwinner and um I acted as such and, uh, you know, he used to, he used to like, or kind of like be turned on by my, um, uh, bossy ways, you know, and say things like you, you look, you look cute when you are mad. So then he gets older and it's like, who are you talking to? You know what I mean? Because he's becoming a man, you know what I mean? And he's just like, you know, I didn't, a I didn't ask you to redo my resume. You know what I mean? I didn't ask you to to do this and that, but I would take on those things and be that person because I just was further in life than he was. I was buying, I was like 20 buying properties, you know, without him. He didn't have anything. He knew what I was doing, but I would research those things and teach myself certain things and like try to get him involved. And he's like, I want, I want to do that. And I'm like, well, why not? Yeah. This doesn't get angry, you know? And so me being for 20 to 45, I'm a totally different person. Yeah. I sure. would never, I don't, I don't raise my voice to men that I'm dating. Mm. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I manage my, my business. I manage my comedy career. Um, you know, there's a certain way that I handle uh, uh, employees that work for me, but I, I, I know how to not manage a man. Like <laughs> men to, to now men think I'm pretty docile because I know what to argue about or, or or not argue about but discuss it doesn't have to be an argument right. you know so now if there was some draws on the floor i, I would just pick them up <laughs> that doesn't have to be an argument <laughs> and and when you're 20 years old you argue about the toilet seat being up i'm not saying that sure you can ask about it but for it to become something where you are arguing and not speaking to each other it's ridiculous yeah. Yeah. put the toilet seat down yeah no, i agree <laughs> It's just, it's just not that serious, you know? Mm -hmm. So you realize that when you get older, um, you know, there's a lot more important things than some of the silly things that you would argue about. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. 20 some years. Out. Yeah. Shout out to 45. Um, I'm 46. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't do arguments. If I'm arguing, um, it's probably time we break up. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
at, at what point did you know there was trouble in paradise? When did you realize, like, you know, maybe this shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't do this? I knew actually a week before we got married. Hmm. Yeah, there was um, some. Uh, we were about to get married, and my um, husband was fiance at the time was cleaning out the closet in my room while I was at work. I can't remember if he had a job. I think he did. I don't remember. He might not have. That was our other issue back and forth. Mm -hmm. But um, he was cleaning out the closet. I was at work and like my closet, he's cleaned out the closet that, I, you know, that I grew up in and there were there was a box in the back of the closet with pictures of my old boyfriend. Nothing derogatory. Yeah. It was just, I didn't know they were there. And there was this whole entire conversation and he was ready to call the wedding off himself because I kept pictures. It, it's not a new house that we live in then I can maybe understand that. But this is just, this is a box I haven't opened in years. I don't there. Yeah. Yeah. Who told you to clean out the closet? It, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, what are you doing? So it was just, the, it was, it was ridiculous. Like I just, I couldn't believe it. And um, my mom, I have an aunt named Tressa and she just was, she begged me not to get married. She was just like, y'all are too young. And she was just like, you know, this is a perfect example of how immature he is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to like calm him down. My, my mother thought it was ridiculous. It it was just, it was crazy. It was crazy. I, so I, I kind of knew then mm -hmm. and then got him off the ledge and just made him understand. Like, I didn't even know those were there. I don't, I don't talk to that man. <laughs> like I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. yeah. so that, 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 that was a week before we got married. And then I would say um, year five, which is the, 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 constantly getting laid off once again i'm the breadwinner mm -hmm. it is a um a uh stress on me yeah and, you know so I, I i understand men and how they feel when everything is on them and i get it some men want it all to be on them that's fine if that's what you want <laughs> my own provider mm -hmm. hey pay 100 percent if you could do that um but for most of the world men like cannot pay 100 percent um that that's not realistically that you're not gonna you know it's a small percentage that can pay 100 percent. so my point is i understand how that feels when you know your spouse keeps losing a job and it's and it's their fault um, <laughs> and, and you're like okay so now i gotta get a second job and i gotta sell mary Kay on the side and i, I, I got a i got a job job and then i'm doing hair and then I'm trying to manage the properties of, with the tenants that I own and, you know, just kind of like doing all this stuff by myself. So yeah, I was, yeah. So we were, we were together. We were married for seven years, mm -hmm. seven, seven year itch. Seven years. <laughs> seven years. Well, I'm, I'm coming up on year number six at the end of this month. So what, what is your, what is your piece of advice for, for, for us? Oh goodness! I mean, now that's hard to say without knowing you all, but yeah, uh, just some common yeah. common wisdom. Just to continue to, you know, communicate and talk about things, even if you feel that you might hurt their feelings, you just you got to talk about it. Um, you got to keep things hot and still have date night, whether you got kids or not. You know, um, you have to. Um, what else? What else? What else? I mean, communication is communication, respect and honesty. Um, you know, if you're spiritual people, I mean, you know, you whatever, whatever you believe in. I mean, whether that's, you know, biblical or or, or not. I mean, you got to, you know, getting that word together or whatever it is that you believe in. You know, no disrespect to other people might be Muslim or, or you know. For sure. have, but, yeah, there need to be some spirituality in your life. I mean, I think it's good to a certain extent when uh, men be scared, God gonna get them. Uh, <laughs> like, when, they, when they're just not scared at all, uh, I think that's when the cheating happened. No, I'm just joking. But seriously. <laughs> no, that's uh, real. I mean, I, just, I think that has something 
to do with it. Like that sometimes is their reason to not, you know, go through with, with that. But um, you just got, you got to talk. You got to, you got to talk. Yeah. Try to keep... And, you know, in by six years mm -hmm. in, you know each other's love languages. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, if you don't, now that's a problem. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to know that. Oh, so yeah. just need to kind of operate in that, you know, and that may evolve. You know, just over time of, you know, loving a person as they change and as as they evolve and grow, yeah. um, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to do that. Yeah, for sure. Um, because I'm looking at, you know, as as I, as I get older, because there's a 12 year age gap between my wife and I, I'm 12 years older than her. And I'm really at this age is becoming a better communicator than I was in my first marriage. Like my first marriage, I was I was trash. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was trash when it came. To uh, but now I'm I'm a lot better, and I'm learning to get better. You know, at this age, so um, the communication piece is important. Oh my god! Yeah. But why do you think you were trash? Well, you, do you think you you just you too busy to care? Like, what do you think the reason was? Uh, for me, because I was married for fifteen years. For me, I, I think I was just immature. Uh, and then I didn't know how to express myself because when I was growing up as a kid, you know, I grew up in an era where, you know, kids are seen and not heard, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. So um, we didn't have a lot of communication. My mother just told me what to do and that was it. Right. So I kind of grew up like uh, shutting my feelings down and struggling with how I really felt about things. So, um, okay. Yeah, it was just through this time around that getting married, remarried. I'm like, you know what? Let me get in this therapist's office. <laughs> yeah, always good. I mean, that's a, that's always a good thing to, uh, you know, have a th go through therapy, even if you feel like you don't need it. Uh, I have not, but I I think that that's 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 good. I'm not saying I won't. Maybe I will, but um, but that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. What what is the one thing that you did to to heal to get over your marriage, or was it something that you were just like, "I'm glad it's over"? I moved to Houston. Hmm. I moved moved to, I moved to Houston. I was glad it was over. I was. <laughs> yeah. It was um, it was really one of the best decisions that I made. I, I joke and say I wish I was a baby mama, um, but no, I, I did not want to be anybody's baby mama at all. Um, but I moved, moved to Houston, um, started life all over again. And, you know, that put that distance between us because at the time, and again, he's a completely different person now, but it started to feel like we were brother and sister or like I was taking care of a child, you know, or, or you know what I mean? And so we needed that distance because I knew if I was there, he was going to call me and ask me for something or money or something. And I was going to give it to him. So we needed that, that distance apart, you know, so, but yeah, it was easier. I think it's harder when you, um, and, and, and was that the best decision for our child? I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure it was. I was going to say probably, mm -hmm. but it, there's no way that months and months or years without seeing your father is good. Like there's no way, but I think my it would have been a different experience having to, you know, okay, you take our daughter on the weekends or every other weekend or and having to see each other all the time and see each other who, you know, meet who we're dating. We didn't none of that happen. Mm -hmm. He's never met anybody I've dated. Um, he's been married uh again, he's divorced again, and so I've never met her. Mm -hmm. you know, he has more kids, and so I've never met them. So it's just it would be. To I'm sure it's totally different for other people that yeah. have to uh, do that. Yeah, no, for sure, I get it. So, what do you think are the three ingredients every marriage need to be successful? <sighs> Honesty, communication, and a great sex life. Hmm. That's interesting that you pick those three. Because yeah. usually women just like communication, communicate, communication, communication. <laughs> so as a woman, what made you say the sex life? 
What you mean? <laughs> what what do you mean as a woman? Well, a woman. Well, well, what I'm saying is, is because a lot of times, you know, women that that's 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 really not on their top three list when you do the whole survey. That ain't true. You I don't think, think so? I think a lot don't want to say it mm. um, because of how it is perceived, especially if they are religious. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's extremely important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not the all be all, and eventually, as you get older, then you both may not have any desire for it. I mean, but that's usually like eighties. You know what I mean? You know that's not happening in forties and fifties and and sixties. Um, but it, it's a, it's a, it's important. It's important to us. You know, I mean, because you got to think about it. You hear all these stories about how sex stopped after they were married and stuff like that there's a lot of women that are marrying men they're not attracted to mm. ability mm. um th- that's unfair it's unfair to yourself yeah. it's unfair to them you know why would you marry somebody you don't even want want to touch you mm. yeah it's a, it's it's important but i don't know you might you might do this and they'd be like oh no it ain't important to me okay all right ma'am Whatever, but it's 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 important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so, what is what what advice would you give to singles who desire to marry? What would you tell them? Just generally. Yeah, just generally. Don't stay in the house. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, I mean, if you you cannot meet anybody if all you do is stay on the house they stay in the house i mean people say it all the time i'm not the first comedian to say it but i mean it's not it's probably not gonna be like the amazon man you know what i mean it, it's probably not gonna be the uber eats driver you know you're gonna have to get out do things um i wouldn't suggest you use day naps at all but that's my opinion i suggest you meet people face to face in person get out do things um, and if that's what you want, focus on that, manifest it, mm-hmm. you, you and focus on what you do want, not what you don't want. Like the more you focus on, I don't want this and he can't do this and he can't have that. You just, you just attract more of that. You just attract more of that negativity. So focus on what you do want and just let it, let it come. Mm-hmm. You, you said, know, you, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just saying, but you got to get out and meet people. Yeah, I agree. Because people just live on their phones, and that's that's it. That's the extent. I can't do online dating. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, I want to ask you about that. Is did you have a bad experience with online dating, or you, that's just not your thing? Yes, I mean, not 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 something that's just so horrible. Mm-hmm. It's just that just not only have I had this experience, I've also worked for like a um a company that specializes in they will be categorized as um, a matchmaking company, but they're really not. It's not matchmaking. It's an it's an, a singles club. Okay. And I don't want to say the name because we're not trying to ask sure. them. Right. Um, but I've worked for them in, in, in the, you know, there is a um, screening process for these people to be a part of the club. The club has like over 50,000 members been around since 1987. Mm-hmm. Um, there is actually a, a, another club that's specifically for um, African-Americans that are really doing the same thing. And you hear the same thing over and over again is is the experiences with online dating. Um, the the how easy it is to go somebody. That's so immature. Yeah. It's the most mature thing that you could possibly do so it's just it's giving you the idea of there's something, you know, something great, something green on the other side type of thing but it also just opens you up to more crazy people like fivefold like people that you wouldn't have never talked to you know so you hear women talk about how we always run into men who are uh homeless you know i had a joke on the on the show on the ready love about homosexuals Mm -hmm. they just they just they just like your apartment they're like you they just they like that you live in a nice area, you know, but it opens you up to that because now there's hundreds of men that you wouldn't have even been talking to. And so it's just, it's dangerous to me, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And it's just a lot of scammers and stuff like that too. I've never been scammed, you know, but um, I'm addicted to watching people getting scammed on do, romance scams. I don't know why I'm addicted to it, but it still amazes me that people can be catfished in 2023. It's still happening. Like as we speak, somebody is being catfished and they are telling them to send money through a Bitcoin wallet and they're doing it and they've never met them. They've never video. They've, some of them just even, even just text them, you know, so, but overall it's dangerous and you just got to get out, meet people in person and, you know, I'm matchmaking is, I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, that's more condensed yeah. in the field and, you know, you can do a background check. And, <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I get it. Got to do the background check because folks out here. Yeah, next level. Mm -hmm. Question: Who makes a better spouse? Someone marrying for the first time, or someone who's remarrying? That's hard. <laughs> That's That's difficult. I mean, I think I would be a better spouse now because I know all my faults. Mm -hmm. I know mistakes that I made. I I know that um that uh I was a bitch sometimes. I don't know if you allow that on this show, but we I, like I know I was emulating what I like my mother. My mother was married to my father, but they also got divorced when I was like two, you know, so I didn't grow up for real, you know, but I'm emulating my mother being this strong Scorpio woman. And now and my mother's a minister now. She <laughs> yeah. was <laughs> She is now, but um, I'm just emulating what I felt was right. My auntie, my aunt Tressa was married. All, my, all my, everybody in my family was married and they're either still married or divorced. Most of them are divorced now, but I was emulating what I thought was this strong black woman. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, I could tell my husband what to do and he listened to me mm -hmm. and, that was cool back then. I don't want a man that I could tell him what to do. We can decide on some things together, but I mean, you know, people hate the world word submissive, but it's all about, you know, our feminine wiles, really. Like I I I can make someone I can put an idea in my my significant other's head and he thinks it's his idea. It's really mine. But <laughs> With being older and understanding like how your feminine wiles work and how you, you know, um, you can express an idea to someone without arguing, without cutting them off, without telling them what to do, without the the um, back and forth, without the he has to see my point. Of, I can actually sit back and listen and not say a word. I couldn't do that at 20. Yeah, right. <laughs> not say anything. <laughs> well. Wow. I'm gonna give you a solution that you didn't even ask for. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just how it was. So, you know, I was emulating what I thought was was right. So, I, I would be a better spouse now. Now, someone that maybe grew up in a household of a mother and father, they've had the, and and not only not only do you have to grow up in the household of a mother and father, but people got to talk to you. Mm -hmm. If you if you have parents, but then they don't talk to each other. Or they're always arguing or, you know, you got people that grew up and no one even talked to them about the birds and the bees. Like, mm -hmm. how is this happening? <laughs> you know? So it does depend on their life as well. So it it, it just it just depends. Um, I, I, I think people that that sometimes are are religious in a in a in a in a in a right amount. Yeah. Like not to the point where it's, I think sometimes, you know, they're, they're ready. They're going to counseling. They're, you know, this is what they want. This is where they feel God is leading them. You know, that that'd be great for them, you know, which could also be this case for some young people. I just think you need to wait until you're about 30. But, <laughs> but hey, if you want 10 kids, then start it or I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Uh, sometimes it's just better to have your kids when you're young so you can get it out the way because kids in my 40s, I'm just like, what am I doing? It's still a lot to deal with, even with being young, especially the the financial side. And I think that's kind of that's where my bias comes from. 
is is that is you know being a breadwinner trying to build something and your spouse is not with it um or or just kind of working maybe you both are on the same page but you are working so much or trying to save so much that you're really not living life because you focus on the bag together you know i mean it, it just it just i i think they need to wait a little bit um and go from there but i'm sorry oh diatribe you asked a simple question and i gave you a thesis on uh relationships my apologies hey, hey. and that's why i brought you on the show right <laughs> <laughs> this is why i had you <laughs> um, Oh my God, this has been uh, an informative episode for sure. Trust, I let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. You can get in touch with me on Instagram, Tressa underscore Ellaby. Um, YouTube is Comedian Tressa. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook fan page is Tressa, Comedian Tressa Ellaby too as well. Um, I got some shows coming up. Um, my link, link tree is in my bio. I'm always posting. Um, and uh, make sure you come to Lady Bits, my five year. Um, I've been running, hosting and producing Lady Bits. It's an all female comedy show, longest running comedy show in Texas, actually, for women. And the next one is November 24th. So make sure y'all come to that if you're in Houston. Mm, for sure. <clears throat> I'll make sure I have everything linked up in the show notes. So anyone who want to get tickets or anything of that nature, connect, like, uh, go and yeah. connect with Tressa for sure. This has been a phenomenal episode. Tressa, thank you so much for your time. Those who are listening via podcast, make sure that you leave a rating and review. Would love to hear from you. Uh, by doing so, gives you and put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff, right? <laughs> And if you are watching via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with someone. You never know what someone is going through. So you can see this and be like, hey, this dress is dropping gems. You know, <laughs> so make sure that you share this video as well. Uh, this is Sean Heineman with special guest. Tressa Ellaby. And we are out. Take care, people. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.